What's the difference between a rook and a snug piercing? What even is the helix? When trying to decide on a new ear piercing, it's easy to get overwhelmed. But don't worry, because today we're covering them all, or as many as we can. Starting off, you have the lobe. This is the fleshy bit of skin at the bottom of your ear and is the most common spot for ear piercings. It's also the part of the ear that's commonly stretched to wear plugs and eyelets. Classic style stud earrings, hoops, hook dangles, and huggies are all used for this piercing, but librettes are also becoming a popular choice. The upper part of the lobe is called, well, the upper lobe. It can be home to additional piercings and can also be stretched if there is enough soft tissue to do so. Above the lobe, we have the helix. The helix is the outer rim of the ear, starting above the lobe where the cartilage begins and ending all the way around at the front or the forward helix. This part of the ear can be pierced in a wide variety of ways, though some, like the industrial piercing, require the helix to be shaped a certain way. The exact piercing might determine the jewelry used, but generally librettes and different style rings are most common. In the innermost section of the ear, you'll find the conch piercing. The conch is the cartilage of the cupped section of the ear next to the ear canal. Librettes and straight barbells can be worn here, but the cartilage can also be punched to accommodate a plug. Another option are large clickers or captive rings that go through the conch and around the helix, often referred to as an orbital conch. The snug piercing is located on the small inner ridge of cartilage surrounding the hollow of the conch, sometimes known as the anti-helix. Unlike lobe and conch piercings that go through the ear and come out the back side, this piercing goes through one side of the ridge and out the other. A curved barbell is a comfortable piece to wear through this piercing when it is healed, but it's possible to wear circulars or small hoops as long as they're, you know, snug. A rook piercing can share the anti-helix with a snug, placed on that same line of cartilage in a small hollow below the forward helix and above the date. The best jewelry for this piercing is usually a curved barbell, but an oval-shaped clicker is also an attractive and low-maintenance option. Next, a date piercing is located on the innermost curl of the forward helix, along the bit of cartilage that dips and transitions into the hollow of the ear. Most often, the jewelry used here will be a seamless ring, clicker ring, or a curved barbell. Everyone's anatomy is different, and some people can accommodate a ring with a pretty large diameter in this location for an impressive statement piece. Just below that, we have the tragus the small cartilage bump that protects the opening of the ear canal and transitions smoothly to connect with the side of the face. It's possible to wear small captive bead rings, clickers, or circular barbells in your tragus, but librettes are another attractive option that give the impression of a single point piercing. Right across from the tragus is the appropriately named anti-tragus. It's the section of the lower ear above the lobe where the soft tissue ends and the cartilage begins. Again, curved barbells are a nice choice to wear in this location, but many people also choose to wear a simple ring. Finally, you have the flat of the ear. As the name suggests, this is the flat part of the cartilage surrounded by the helix and the anti-helix. It can be home to a wide variety of piercing placements and projects, from simple plugs to barbells and librettes featuring dangling charms. And as an honorable mention, we have the industrial piercing. This piercing is not named because of its anatomy, as it is technically a double helix. It is pierced twice through the helix with a bar connecting it. As always, everyone's body is different and the exact shape and size of ears will vary from person to person. And not all ears can support all styles of piercing. Your piercer should be able to help you figure out what piercings will work best with your ears. We hope that this has been informative. Which of these do you have? Or are you planning to get any? Let us know and then drop by bodyartforms.com to find thousands of jewelry options for your piercings. Please also like and subscribe and follow us on all of our socials at Body Art Forms. Bye!